So the GOTO telescope facility has just announced the discovery of a new supernova, so an exploding star in a distant galaxy. And amazingly, this is actually coinciding with clear skies. So what we're going to do is use the telescope in the observatory. We're going to hunt down this galaxy and I'm going to share with you the views of this supernova. So this video is split into chapters. So we've got night one. We're going to put the binary viewer in the telescope and we're going to hunt it down visually. And I'm going to show you the view through the eyepiece, show you how it looks to the eye. And then in part two, uh, the second night, we're actually going to put the camera in the eyepiece and we're going to hunt it down electronically. So I'll show you what the view is like visually through the eyepiece and then with the camera, show you what the view is like electronically. So as we get the telescope ready, we've got to do a three star alignment. So the telescope is going to point at three different stars in the night sky. I'm going to get them centered in the eyepiece. So what we've done now is we've just done a three star alignment. So my telescope knows from the phone where it is, what time it is, and I've now done three alignment points in the night sky. So it now knows where it's pointing. And I must say that is the best ever three star alignment I've got. Each star in the eyepiece centered on here. And we're now ready to go hunting. So this has got to be my favorite time of the day. We've got this beautiful, summer's evening sky. I've already seen a few Perseids while I've been setting up and doing the star alignment. So we have the square of Pegasus over here. And then from this star to this star, somewhere up there is a galaxy. Now you can see the galaxy with this telescope, you can see it with the small telescope. So I've lined up now with NGC 7331 just by using Sky Safari. And that's what I love about having Sky Safari. I can position a galaxy 47 million light years away in the eyepieces without having to refer to a star like this, without having to star hop. There it is in the eyepiece. Um, I'm just conscious it's not even properly dark yet. We're still at twilight. The moon's about to rise. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to be quick to catch this supernova. What we've got in the field of view is a misty patch of nebulosity, the misty outline of the galaxy. It's inclined at an angle across the field of view. I've got a few what we call sort of field stars, field stars in the field of view. That misty outline, ghostly glow of a galaxy. And in the centre of that is a brighter nucleus. You've got the brighter core of the galaxy. And just alongside that is a sort of an equivalent brightness star. And that star is actually a supernova inside another galaxy. It's amazing to be thinking, I've actually seen this live. And then of course you remember the galaxy's at 47 million light years away. So that light's actually been traveling for 47 million years. So those photons were created in the supernova, they've traveled across all those depths of space and time, come through the telescope and are now inside my eye. Unfortunately now, as I feared, the moon's come up and the whole sky, the whole sort of eastern sky is completely washed out. I could almost see the sort of, the sort of brightness of the galaxy dropping away as the moon came up. The moon just washed out the entire sky. But wow, what a beautiful, beautiful session. I could see the Milky Way see this galaxy, see the supernova. I can actually now see Saturn. 
has just risen as well. So Saturn's just climbing above the tree line. So as the moon's up, the moon's now too bright uh, to observe anything else, but it's still too low to observe itself. So I think with work tomorrow, I'm going to call it a night. We'll try again tomorrow night. We should get an extra hour. Uh, the moon will rise an extra hour later. So we should get a bit more time tomorrow night. So hello and welcome back to the observatory. We've got another clear night. It's not often we get to say that in England. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go and find that galaxy again, NGC 7331. And with this time we're going to put a camera in the telescope, probably in the small telescope. Uh, and then we can, I can bring you that live view, or as live as the camera can see it. And then we'll catch that supernova and I'll be able to show you firsthand how the supernova looks in the galaxy. And you can then compare that with the sketch I've already got of it. So we'll have the camera view and the eyepiece view. So after what's been about 20 minutes of faffing, of pure and simple faffing, uh, I've got the telescope working, I've got the software working, I've got SharpCap up on this screen, and we're actually looking at Polaris. And if you look carefully at Polaris, and you can actually see this through the telescope as well, see it with the eye, Polaris is actually a double star. It's two stars physically orbiting each other. Uh, one much larger, which is obviously the alpha star, the primary star, and then you've got the tiny little secondary as well. So quite a cool way to start the night. So we've lined up, I've checked the focus. Uh, so there is our view of Polaris with the secondary, with its secondary star. And then I have my baton off mask, my focusing mask that I 3D printed. Let's put that on like so. Yeah, we're pretty well focused. Maybe a smidge down. There we go. Right, so that looks pretty well focused to me. So I'm using the controls in sharp cap. So we will get the go to thingy up and we want to go to full catalog. First time I've used this, so I may be doing this wrong. 7331 Galaxy, uh, select target and start. I do have the squeakiest chair, so I do apologise for that. Yeah. Always keep a nervous eye on cables when the telescope is slewing. Move you out of the way. Oh, let's leave you there, actually. So, waiting for the mat to settle. Done the plate solve. In theory, then. the live stacking oh there oh look at that oh fantastic so you can actually see there the galactic core this is what i was seeing when i was at the eyepiece yesterday you've got the galactic core and the the supernova alongside it oh brilliant oh i'm so pleased you guys get to see this there we are some spiral arms just coming now this is with a 90 millimeter refractor Oh, brilliant. So I've turned all the lights down now. The screen's on minimum brightness. So what we'll do is we'll leave the camera running and that signal will build up. So those, all those 10 second exposures, 10 second photographs, they'll just stack one on top of the other. And just see some spiral arms and some satellites. I'm not too sure if they're satellites or more distant galaxies. Oh, bloody satellite. So what I do is I do that sigma clipping so it averages out the satellite so hopefully that will disappear as the stack builds. Oh, it's gone right through. Oh, that's so exciting. So we saw the supernova. So we saw the supernova with the big telescope and I showed you my picture of that and now by using the power of the camera, by being able to take these long exposures or 10 second exposures, it's not particularly long for astronomy imaging. You can actually see this galaxy start almost to form in front of our eyes. Beautiful, wow. 
It's a bit hazy as well. It's not the best of transparencies tonight. We've had this really nice heat wave the last week or so. But at least it's not raining. Right, what I'm going to do then, I'll pause the recording. I'm just going to let this build up and then we'll show you what it looks like. Oh, so excited, so excited to show you a live view of a galaxy. Oh, look at that. It's with a bloody satellite in the middle of it. So, I've just gone in and made myself a cup of tea. So you can't look at an ancient galaxy, ancient light from a distant galaxy without a cup of tea. So we can see in there then, yes, we've got the nucleus the spiral arms, the dust lanes, the supernova and these distant galaxies as well in the background. Absolutely stunning. How much have we done? 23 minutes. The sky tonight is pretty poor. It's very hazy. Only the brightest stars are poking through. So I think I'm going to save that as an image. So what I have noticed earlier, if you look to the side of the image, there's actually a small galaxy cluster that's well it's alongside the original galaxy but it's actually much much further away it's actually a truly physically interacting galaxy cluster this is called Stefan's Quintet five galaxies but these are 290 million light years away so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to nudge the telescope over a bit we'll then get both our supernova galaxy and this quintet, this quintet of interacting galaxies on the same chip, so on the same field of view. So the sky really isn't improving. Hardly any of the faint stars are visible now. And the bright ones have all got a sort of glow around them. But that's looking pretty good. What are we at now? 24 minutes and there. There's our galaxy with the dust lanes, the supernova, the distant galaxies, the galactic cluster all that through the camera through the haze so i'm going to stop it there we could do something like the ring nebula that's quite bright what else is up there the ring nebula that's a good idea so we've just done a supernova if you have a lower mass star typically the size of our sun it doesn't have that sort of dramatic explosion it doesn't have the supernova the core still collapses but it doesn't explode the core collapses into a white dwarf and the outer atmosphere just basically just puffs away. It's called a planetary nebula. It's nothing to do with planets. And there's a really bright one just up there underneath Vega. So let's go and do that then. Let's go and get the camera controls back. And we need our go to. And I need to search. Let's see, A57, the ring nebula, so called, because it looks like a ring. So, start. And this will be quite interesting because, say, you've got a supernova and a planetary nebula, and they're both stars that have come to the end of their life, but very different effects. Get nervous watching cables. So the okay, power cables there. So I can't help but thinking as well that it's wonderful to be able to use the camera and the laptop, but it's like an extra thing to do. It's an extra bit of kit to manage. It is quite nice just being able to look through the eyepieces. Of course, you don't get the sort of resolution, that sort of ability to pick out all the detail, but there is something quite pleasing about seeing this stuff for yourself. All right, oh, there we are. There's one little ghostly ring right in the middle. So you can see why it's called a planetary nebula. Let's just put the live stacking on. Oh, look at that. The tracking's not doing very well. So ignoring the, the poor tracking, that is a planetary nebula.
So good morning, it's now tomorrow morning. I'm looking at the, well, one at the sketch I've done and also of the live stack, the pictures we took through the, through the camera. And even though it was a hazy night, I must admit, I still get a thrill out of this. I've seen a supernova, I've got those photons uh, in my eye. I actually took some pictures uh, last year as well with the telescope, with the big telescope. Um, so bearing in mind, we're looking at different image scale. It's amazing to see you know, that we've got a supernova, you know, on, on the on the screen, on the laptop screen. Now, what's interesting about this supernova, this is a type 1a supernova. So this is where you have a white dwarf and it's typically orbiting a larger companion. Now, the white dwarfs are really dense. So actually they pull material from their companion that accumulates on the surface of the white dwarf. That material builds up, builds up, builds up over time and eventually it reaches a critical mass and that's what kicks off this supernova, this thermonuclear nuclear explosion that rips the star apart. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a binary star, this star that's been destroyed in this runaway thermonuclear explosion. That's what we're seeing across those millions of light years of space. It's amazing. That supernova is as bright as the core of the galaxy. And that's why we can see it even in the eyepiece and see it with the camera. You know, it's bright enough to be seen visually uh, through the telescope. So let's recap then. We've got a supernova, we've got spiral arms, we've got distant galaxies, we've got an interacting galaxy cluster. And that's all live, or as live as the camera can see through the telescope. So it's a real thrill to be able to see those and to share those views with you. Uh, so my thanks once again to the Patreon. Thanks once again for your continued support. And I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky.